Hey, this is Henk Ackermans, and this is Smart Asset Management Lecture 7, Section 3, Degradation Models in Action. In the previous sections, uh, we've saw, seen some marvelous generic degradation models, models that describe the fundamental laws of physics behind how stuff breaks down in practice. But in practice, you have to make those generic degradation models specific. You have the generic degradation model, but it has to be made specific to a specific setting, a specific machine, a specific wall, whatever. And that degradation model then has to be integrated into a specific maintenance policy that fits the context in which is it in. And that maintenance policy then is only part of a broader smart service, an asset health service, if you like. Now, one uh, company that did this really well in the context of one of our projects is SciTech. And the project is called Campione. And October 7, 2015 was a happy day. You see the little bold guy there in the middle receiving a plague saying that this was the first smart industry field lab in the Netherlands. That's the Dutch Minister of Economic Affairs at that time uh, up here. There's my a fantastic colleague Paul van Kempen left to me and Ineke Dezen J. Hamming, the chairwoman of our uh, industry association, FME, in the middle. And that was, uh, that was a, uh, a, good, uh, a good moment uh, to be uh, in. Um, SciTech is part of that Campione project, was part of that Campione project. So Smart Industry was a big national initiative. Campione is one of the first field labs in that. It had a significant funding of some 10 million and the funding for SciTech was almost 1 million there. Although, of course, the majority of the investment was made by them. SciTech is an industrial service provider located at Camelot, which uh, is the name nowadays for the former DSM chemical company plants. And they uh, are the well, lead service provider uh, at that plant and at other sites. And they had big plans uh, with what they called a asset health center. Now, this is just an artist's impression from uh, late 2015, from the time that it was opened. Actually, it looks a bit uh, less uh, 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 fancy, but, but still pretty cool. And uh, the asset center itself was opened uh, by several of the asset owners uh, in, uh, well, half a year later. Uh, you see here uh, Richard Schouten, uh, who was uh, one of the important uh, uh, leaders in innovation in SciTech there is see Marisa Yilder there, who's behind many of, if not most, of all the slides in this, uh, uh, in this presentation. Also driver behind that uh, field lab, and there's Rob de Heus there, also a world-class maintenance champion, and many others. So uh, success has many fathers. Now, in this uh, asset health center, degradation models were uh, an integral part of the asset health center's uh, services that, that SciTech wanted to provide. So they wanted to look at a whole integrated offering of from the censoring to uh, algorithms, early warnings, decisions, work orders, etc. But over here you see those algorithms, the SciTech knowledge. And over here you see that they want to improve the algorithms based on the learnings done uh, in the uh, analysis over here as well. So degradation models were and, and remain important to this asset health uh, center service. They took a smart approach. They basically went for one degradation model at a time. So uh, this Camelot site consists of uh, several asset owners uh, and all these asset owners have several plants and every plant they looked for a small pilot just a small pilot and every pilot would have a business case where the payback period would be basically well less than a year um, and so every pilot was small and, and not so very risky but also this, this created the groundswell and broad areas of the entire plant for this new way of working uh, so, uh, in a paraphrase, keep calm and think big and small was the, uh, was the motto in, in those early days, and they kept that up. So, uh, you see, uh, the pilots were not just only in degradation models. There is machine learning there, what they use for that, but there's also the condition monitoring, uh, 3D scan of the plant, uh, use of mobile devices, uh, certain uh, workflow automation, uh, censoring. 
So they did many things. I'm just highlighting out the degradation models here because they made great progress in that. Here's one other example of that. The slides in Dutch, but you can still make up what we're talking about here. This is the fouling of a certain product filter uh, with machine learning. So uh, you can see in, in, in the behavior over time that something interesting is happening over here. It, in, what I always like is that it's not such a straightforward pattern. There's a peak, then it goes down, and then you get the final peak. Anyway, through machine learning, and we'll get to that in data analytics, they could predict seven days in advance uh, what would happen. And uh, this is relevant because in this case, uh, it was very difficult to do this time-based, uh, this replacement. So they had to go to condition-based, but it was difficult because there was not a single straightforward degradation pattern. It was a bit more uh, complex than that. Another example were some uh, valves that, 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 that would fail. And even before the start of the project, I looked to, at, at monitoring the condition of 10 of those valves in one specific plant. They found two deviations there in the patterns. And when they inspected those, they could indeed find that there was something wrong. And yeah, that, that's, uh, that, that, that saved uh, loss production and, and something like, uh, well, over 100,000 euros, which isn't uh, the world in terms of the, uh, the, the, the money that goes around in these plants, but it is a very nice and clear quick win, if you like. Now, over a year later, uh, uh, well, the, 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 this, this steady growth had paid off. They, uh, they, they were investing more than they uh, uh, said originally. They still get the funding from there. But they had already 37 pilots running at this time, had uh, developed over 30 different uh, algorithms, and were looking at some 200,000 different assets uh, that they could monitor. So that, that's, uh, that's a serious amount. Um, and if you, uh, this is just a, a, a list of, of successful uh, catches that they did in 2007, monitoring all these different, uh, all these different assets. And every time a degradation model identified to them where, what is this, this indicator that you look at? The fouling of fans, the wearing of a cylinder, the more fouling, energy losses, which are also a good indicator of uh, how something else is apparently not going so very well. So it's, it's, it's really an indirect measurement of, of what's really happening in the degradation model itself. Leakage, future problems of a control valve, high pressures on oil filters, another, and many fouling cases. Uh, so uh, all these are very down to the earth application of degradation models in a, in a practice. They could uh, give you also a nice uh, 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 dashboard for this, early warnings with, with warnings indeed of, hey, perhaps there's something here, we are running out of control, uh, let's do some, uh, perhaps you should take some action. And you could drill down in those, uh, in those warnings to, okay, what is actually the behavior at a lower level uh, of, of detail, that uh, actually a higher level of detail that is, uh, that, I, um, uh, that I understand what's really happening there. So uh, in uh, June 2017, uh, this is one slide suggesting that they now monitor uh, just uh, already half a million of uh, single variables and uh, real time, they manually and real time so, so condition monitoring, so digitize first, they do that for a thousand and they have like 20 uh, degradation models running. Uh, interestingly, I have another presentation uh, just a few months later where uh, that's already 40. And I think that's, uh, that's probably correct that they kept going at this uh, and uh, became more and more sophisticated. Um, here are two examples from the 2017 period. Here's a heat exchanger, very important also in, 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 in these process plants, but also very prone to fouling. And here uh, is another example where you can actually see that that fouling is beginning to occur. And because they could see it timely, uh, it didn't lead to an unplanned stop. They could do it in a planned stop and therefore no extra production losses, which is interesting. Another case, uh, is a failure of a pump valve where a degradation model was quite visible 
uh, in, uh, uh, in a pattern, especially if you look at the, the trend in deviation. And that showed that the revision was necessary. And again, 30,000 euros saved uh, in, in production losses. Also no urgent work, uh, extra work. So again, these numbers are not huge, but they're always positive and always with a payback of, of a period of, of less than a year. So in summary, these degradation models uh, that, that, that we look at in this lecture do need to be integrated into a coherent smart service and a culture. And this is also uh, what they were saying at the time and still are saying. The overarching goal is to develop a digital and innovative culture in which a smart service is, uh, is offered and core element of those smart services are the smart strategies and the algorithms and to be able to do that relatively quickly. And that I think is a very nice uh, uh, example of degradation models successfully in action.